Welcome to Taste of Life, an interactive travel series for the gourmet in us all. This time, we're celebrating Canada's spectacular cuisine. Join us on a delicious Taste of Life journey as we sample the best of what Canada has to offer. From coast to coast, Canada's rich culinary history has evolved into a regional tapestry of unique flavors and dining experiences. We'll get an expert's perspective from culinary activist and author, Anita Stewart. Our feature destinations include a tour of Vancouver's very diverse culinary scene. Then, off to Canada's maritime provinces, where the pace is slower, but the food is just as tasty. Executive chef and owner of one of Vancouver's premier dining experiences, Lumiere, will create a decadent dish of sea bass, chantreau mushrooms, and fresh herbs. Later, we'll travel to the world-renowned Hotel Newfoundland, where executive chef William McElroy will treat us to ice shrimp cakes with aioli. All this and more when Taste of Life returns. Canada is a bountiful country, rich and diverse with an abundance of quality natural products and talented chefs. The country's regional cuisine is on the brink of a major turning point. Recent international acclaim for the creations of our best chefs has heightened awareness. Our products are the pristine raw materials out of which imaginative chefs create joys for the palate that could happen nowhere else on the planet. What I do perhaps more than anything else is network my way across Canada and try to change the perception that Canadians have of how fine our food and wine actually are in this country. Um, we are blessed with magnificent bounty and that's really my job. Finally, Canadians are becoming aware and, and restaurateurs and chefs are becoming aware that we have some very exotic, wonderfully specific ingredients and that Canadian cuisine is regional uh, from coast to coast to coast. In Atlantic Canada, it's down-home goodness, pulled largely from the sea, then complemented by the fruits of fields and orchards. Quebec's uniquely diverse table arises from both classical French roots and a farmhouse hearth. Ontario's vast range of agricultural possibilities have been embraced by wave upon wave of new arrivals. The no-nonsense cooking of the prairies, once geared to sustenance in a harsh land, has now evolved into a sophisticated cuisine that capitalizes on nature's adversity. And then there is the West Coast's amazing mosaic, where the bounty of land and sea have been uniquely incorporated into a cuisine marrying the best of what can be offered. Welcome to our first featured culinary destination, stunning Vancouver. The lush greenery surrounding the city attests to Vancouverite's claim of having the most temperate climate in all of Canada. Vancouver is one of Canada's youngest and most dynamic cities, where cuisine of the East joins hands with the best traditions and newest innovations of the West. Vancouverite's passion for health and wealth and living life to its fullest is evident in its markets. The downtown Granville Island Market is not a once-a-week visit for producers, it's a daily way of life, of ensuring that every morsel on the table is the highest quality made from the freshest products available in the province. Household gourmets aren't the only ones to frequent the Granville Island Market. Many of the city's chefs make regular pilgrimage to celebrate the source of Vancouver's exploding food culture. I, what I think makes Granville Island special is that it's creates a ritualized sort of experience for people. They can come and they can visit on a certain day of the week and do their market shopping and plan their, their family and or entertainment uh, menus around being at the marketplace. The tables at the city's restaurants also reap the benefits from the market. Chefs build up lifelong relationships with vendors, knowing they will find key local ingredients as long as they are possibly in season. The market's bountiful displays pique chefs' creativity and vendors keep them connected to the source of their culinary inspiration. Is that a male or a female? How can we tell that one? They're all males. They're all males. Can't, 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 harvest, can't females. harvest females. Females are a little bumpier on the bottom. Right. Females 
flat. Okay. Right, right. Vancouver lies an equal distance between Europe and Asia, and the food served from this melting pot of both cultures relies heavily on the foods and spices in the markets in Vancouver's Chinatown. Vancouverites and chefs of all backgrounds have long embraced the flavors of the Orient, and the exciting environment of the Asian markets keeps that love affair alive. The Chinese have always been an important part in British Columbia, but especially in the last 20 years with the infusion of the immigrants from Taiwan, northern China, the food has really changed. We have some of the best food in, in the world when it comes to Asian food. Um, our freshness, we have wonderful seasonal cuisine, our seafood is phenomenal, uh, and being on the Pacific Rim, it's a very important part um, of, our, of our cuisine uh, in Vancouver. <laughs> Here, I don't know if you can see it, we have large fresh live eel, and that's very popular now too. Asian ingredients have gained an honored place in the cuisine of Vancouver's restaurants. But what the food critics call fusion is fast becoming reverse fusion, a sort of culinary free trade in which Western ingredients and culinary practices are now showing up in Asian cuisine. Increasingly, Vancouver's restaurants offer dishes that no nationality can entirely claim, yet everyone finds mouthwatering. The choices in Vancouver are enormous, diverse, uh, profuse, uh, there's just an incredible amount to see and to eat uh, available from people who've arrived here from all over the globe. And I think that's one of the real benefits in, in living in one of the world's newest cities. It's still being, uh, it's still unfolding. It's not hidebound by tradition, uh, but rather it is uh, spurred by invention and enormous creativity. Vancouver's passion for new age cuisine has fostered a new breed of chef, one that acknowledges the importance of classical styles but is not tied to convention. No longer are they looking to the world for unique products when everything and more exists right in their own backyard. The style um, is developing into a Pacific Northwest cuisine and it, it draws from all the you know, world influences but because they're using those local ingredients, it makes it more Pacific Northwest, especially in the use of the seafood as well. Eclectic use of ingredients and inventive presentations are the hallmarks of the Vancouver food scene. But culinary aficionados have spotted a new trend, new world versions of tapas bars. With the demographics of the street that I opened on, I couldn't serve the kind of food I was used to serving in that location at $35 a plate. So I thought, well, what if I took the $35 plates down to $10, served the same thing in smaller portions, let people try and be adventurous with their food styles and mix and match wine with each dish. And basically, as a tapas item, because tapas just means small plates anyway, and I call them tapatizers. So it's like tapas, but it's appetizers. It's kind of, you know, a blend of the two. And, that, and that's essentially where the idea came from. Even the most noted restaurants of the classical tradition in Vancouver practice their art with a West Coast palette of ingredients, creating signature dishes that are an exquisite mosaic of the most extraordinary textures and flavors. Canada's, what, 125, was 130, 130 years old. So we're just, we're, we're building our food up now in terms of a name for itself. And, you know, Canadian cuisine for me right now is there's a lot of people across this country that are trying to build a name for it. In essence, we're doing what, you know, was happening in France years ago, and that's working, you know, working with the products we have um, on pulling them up from the roots and producing whatever we can with them in terms of creating the ideas and the identity, and I think that that's what's happening now. We'll be right back with more of Canada's cuisine and our first specialty dish on Taste of Life. Our West Coast specialty dish is a succulent sea bass with chanterelle mushrooms. For a free copy of this recipe, see our website or call toll free. So all you want to do is just take the chanterelles. Okay, and these are local chanterelles from the Queen Charlotte Islands. It's the season for them now. I'm not going to saute them. I'm just going to basically use them. Place on the bottom of the bottom of the pot. 
Okay, I've got some uh, Videli onions or some baby onions I have that are going to add a little bit more flavor. Now they're, they're whole, they're not cooked. I'm just going to add them in, into the pot as well. Okay, then I'm going to take the sea bass and I'm going to put the sea bass here. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to add for the moisture, I'm going to add, I've got, here I have some chicken stock. You might seem kind of odd that it's with fish, but it's going to work. It'll give it a little bit of a, a, a light chicken flavor, but because of the, the mushrooms and the fish, that's what you're going to taste. So this is just a little bit of, just for liquid, I'm just going to add just a touch because the mushrooms have a ton of moisture in them and they're going to pull the moisture out as we're cooking, okay? So we're going to add a little bit of mushroom stock and then again, just for the flavor, I'm going to add just a touch of white wine. I'm going to add it for the flavor as well, just a little bit of uh, olive oil, extra virgin. Just a touch. And then this one I need to have a little bit of seasoning uh, to start off with. I'll finish it with some more. I'll add a little bit of salt to start off with. And then a little bit of the, again, white pepper, uh, freshly, uh, freshly ground, okay? And then just one or two little dollops of butter on top of the fish, okay? You put the lid on, okay? And then on the heat. Okay, now we're all done. I've added the butter, I've added the herbs. And again, the herbs, uh, it's much, much nicer if you add the herbs uh, at the last minute. Okay, I'm just gonna check uh, for my seasoning. Mmm, yum, yum. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit more, just a touch more salt. Okay, pepper's fine. I've used this spoon already once, so I'll get, get a fresh spoon. So we're just gonna take the sea bass. See it, look at that, see how it falls apart? It just flakes apart. And then just take some of your mushroom mixture on top of the fish some of the onions, okay, and then this broth, this wonderful broth that's on the bottom, it has, that's, that's all the, that's all the mushroom flavor, let me just bring it back so you can see again, that's all the mushroom and the onion flavor in the bottom of there, it's beautiful, okay, so we'll just put some of that in, okay, and then just to finish, just to finish this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a touch, just a touch of lemon juice on the fish. Okay, and then if you like, if you're a big fan of, of olive oil, what you can do in the very end, just to give it a little more flavor, is just to put some olive oil around the outside. Okay, and this is uh, at home, like I said, this is a very, very, very simple dish. You know, if you want to decorate it with some, uh, I got some tarragon here. I just put some tarragon on the top. And there you go. This is a sea bass or any white fish cooked with some chanterelles, some uh, vedeli onions, a uh, little bit of uh, some stock, white, uh, white wine, and a little bit of olive oil to finish it off. There you go. Very simple dish, very easy dish to make at home, and an elegant dish to do up for even up to 10 to 12 people. Welcome to our second Taste of Life culinary destination. Far from the bustle of Vancouver, Canada's Maritimes offers the avid traveler a chance to venture into the past and witness some of the most picturesque scenery the country has to offer. When the Maritimes were first discovered by European explorers in 1497, they reported back that the seas were so rich in cod, they slowed the ships down. That's no longer true today, but Maritimers are still very much a seafaring people, living near the sea and working on it too. Dining options range from Prince Edward Island's legendary lobster suppers to some of the most sophisticated fine dining to be found anywhere in Canada. Maritime chefs are solely focused on showing off the best ingredients in the country in a very contemporary, very creative way. Chefs here are true to their roots in promoting the products that grow in their own backyards. What is Canadian cuisine? But it's no different wherever you happen to travel in the world. Cuisine is always based on local ingredients. It's the same right here in Canada. We're Canadians, we're cooking for Canadians, we're using Canadian ingredients, we're in Canada. And what more do you need? It's Canadian cuisine. People come here to experience um, Number one, Newfoundland hospitality, which is which is second to none, 
and number two, the, the, the cuisine, because it is, it is very distinct, very different than, I don't know, let's take Ontario or British Columbia, because it is local. Some of the restaurants in Newfoundland that are now known as fish and chip shops were begun by people who fished for cod before dawn and had the fish on the table that day. Fish and brews, one is a salt fish, and brews is a hard tack, hard bread. You take that and you soak it overnight, and you put your fish and your hard tack in, in water the next day, and you boil it, so your fish is salty, so as the salt goes through it, and you fry up pieces of fat, and you make them right hard, and they're called scrunchings. And so when you've got all this fish and, and the bruise, the bruise is like soggy bread, some people think, and you put it there, and then you put all this fat and scrunchings on top of it, and it's really, really good. The oldest continuous market in Canada is in St. John, New Brunswick a place where locals and chefs alike come for inspiration in the form of a unique assortment of fresh produce from field and sea. We come here frequently. It's a great meeting place for people to bring their, their wares, their goods. A lot of farmers still bring the produce here. Uh, and most of the produce that comes into the city is settled here. So it's a great place for chefs and cooks to come down, take a look at what's coming into the city, what's new. We have a lot of traditional foods here. We also have a lot of new style foods here, which is exciting. So we can combine a little bit of the both. Ties to the sea are strong here. Some still prefer the old fashioned approach, while others work aboard state of the art fishing vessels. The icy waters of the Maritimes yield a delicious harvest for seafood lovers around the world. The industry supports more than half of the four million people that live here. High-tech production facilities like this one in St. John's, Newfoundland process up to five million pounds of shrimp a year. Clearwater Lobster in Halifax, Nova Scotia is famous for its Lobster Hotel, a unique holding system that keeps lobsters at the peak of their health for months until they are ready to be packaged and shipped anywhere in the world within 24 hours. And in New Brunswick, Heritage Salmon is a leading North American grower, processor, and marketer of premium ocean-cultured Atlantic salmon. Up next, a maritime favorite, shrimp cakes at the Hotel Newfoundland, when Taste of Life returns. Our maritime specialty dish is Newfoundland ice shrimp cakes with aioli. For a free copy of this recipe, visit us online or call toll free. What we're basically using is approximately two thirds shrimp to one third potatoes. So there's the diced shrimp. That just goes in, in the mixture and goes in approximately one third of diced cooked potatoes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix that all together Okay. What I try to do is use a lot of Newfoundland ingredients. This is our Newfoundland dried savory. Um, it is available all over Canada, but it is the best here in Newfoundland because it is grown locally and locally produced. A little bit of a touch would be a tiny little bit of Dijon mustard that goes into the mixture. Okay. Now, to bind it, what we're going to be using is some whole eggs. I have already cracked over here. And what I'll be doing is I'll be taking a couple of the yolks out with some of the egg whites, okay? And some lightly toasted breadcrumbs. And this, what will happen is this will all bind together in a, in a, nice, in a nice mixture. Okay, egg only. Egg yolks, three. Now to get the uh, aioli nice and thick, you gotta whip the egg yolks really, really well. So you could be, you know, just watching me here for like uh, two or three minutes, just whipping egg, egg yolks like crazy.
Don't mind me there. You just keep doing what you're yes, doing. Yes, sir. See, we're, uh, we're two of the biggest cooks in Newfoundland, so you can definitely trust that whatever we make what are you talking about? is I'm good to eat. Cook. What are you saying? I'm the biggest cook in Newfoundland. Is that what you're saying? No, we're two of the biggest Oh, cooks. we're two of them. Okay. This is olive oil. This just starts to thicken up the mixture. See if they're now starting to become fairly thick. And of course, uh, very flavorful chopped garlic. Now that's just raw chopped garlic, okay? A lot of people use roasted garlic for this, but we find that at the beginning, if you leave it overnight in your refrigerator, the raw chopped garlic, it, it blends the flavors really nicely in the aioli, and, it's, and it's, it, it has a lot a lot more flavor than the roasted, but um, and both are acceptable. Our savory. This is a very strong flavor, very pungent. So what we're doing, what I'm, what I'm doing here is we're just frying um, the the fish, the, the shrimp cakes in whole butter. Okay. Now what this does, you don't want to use too hot of a, a flame or it will burn the bottom because of the milk content. So what you want to do is put it on a nice low flame and it will, it'll get nice and brown, the, 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 the shrimp cakes, okay? And as soon as Paul's done there, what we'll do is we'll put the plate together. These are shrimp, okay? Uh, what we will do is just put them in a nice way on the plate. Okay, and what we will do is spoon a little bit of our aioli sauce right on top of the cakes, okay? So this is just, okay? Just dribble some of our, our basil oil all over the pan, all over the plate, okay? And that's basically our dish for today. From the Pacific to the Atlantic, Canada's rich culinary tapestry continues to grow and evolve, creating a feast for the senses like no other on the planet. Join us again on Taste of Life. For free recipes or to learn more about Taste of Life, contact our website or call toll-free at 1-888-41-TASTE.